الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. وين دستين in understanding الأصول من علم الأصول. And we have reached the, the stage or the section of the book wherein the author رحمه الله تعالى speaks about المطلق والمقيد. So we'll give a quick example إن شاء الله تعالى to highlight the عام and the mutlaq and then an example to highlight the mutlaq and the muqayyid before we read from the text of the author so if we were in a classroom and on a desk there were six pens two of them black two of them blue and two of them red and i said to the student give me the pens or give me all the pens give me all the pens then the student would have to give me six pens all of them for him to comply to follow what i've asked he would have to give me six i.e all the pens that were there the six pens so that is am it encompasses all of the pens and it applies to all of them okay now imagine that i said to the students or to the student same scenario two black pens two red pens two blue pens i said to him give me a pen give me a pen then for the student to comply with my command all he would have to do is give me any one of those six so it applies to all of those six uh, f1 it encompasses all of those six I, he can pick of any of those six he can pick the, he can pick the first pen or the second pen or the third pen fourth fifth or six he so this statement now encompasses all of those six but he only applies to one of those six. So the student, if I said to him, give me a pen, he would pick one of those and pass it to me. And he would have followed my instruction of giving me a pen. So this is what would be called mutlaqa. This is what would be called mutlaqa. So the am applies to all of the pens uh, encompasses all of the six pens and applies to all of them. He would have to give me all of them. But the mutlaq, it encompasses all of those pens, but only applies to one or part of the all. So it, it is shumuli, it encompasses, but it is badali. It is, it can be substituted. I you can pick pen number one, or you can pick pen number two or number three, and still you follow the instructions. So that's one of the differences or the difference between mutlaq and uh, mutlaq and am. Am it encompasses all and applies to all. Whereas mutlaq it encompasses all of them but only applies to one or parts of the whole. Now the difference between mutlaq and muqayyad is that the muqayyad has a qualifying aspect to what is being mentioned so if i said to the student give me a pen he can pick any of those six pens anything that comes under the category of a pen he'll be able to pick it there is no qualifying uh, restriction made but if i if i said now the same example as the same scenario there were six there are six pens two black two blue and two red if i said to the student give me a red pen give me a red pen now this instruction has taqeed, has a, a qaid, a restriction, or you can say a qualifying factor mentioned with it. So not, it's, it's not just any pen now, but it's a red one. So if I said to the student, give me a red pen, the student would not be able to give me any of those six. He would only be able to give me a pen which is qualified with the color of being red. So he wouldn't be able to pick the pe a pen that is blue or one that is black. He would have to pick a pen which is qualified by its color of being red. So these three uh, terms now, am is what we covered previously. It encompasses all that was mentioned and applies to all of it. Mutlaq, it encompasses all of that was mentioned but only applies 
to part as we spoke uh, as we gave in the example and muqayyad is when there is a dis there is a um, a qualifying aspect to what was mentioned as per the example or the color could be something else so let's look at what the author rahimahullah ta'ala mentions he says here ta'rif al-mutlaq the de uh, definition of mutlaq so al-mutlaq lughatan so linguistically mutlaq is the opposite of muqayyid okay wastilahan and this is what we want to focus on uh, technically i in this subject mutlaq is ma dalla ala al-haqiqati bila qaydin it is that which points to the essence or an actuality without restriction or qayd without a qualifying factor without a qualifying factor the reason I'm trying to avoid the term restriction is because I don't want you to get confused with khas and that's another reason why we say try to stick to the Arabic terms تَعَالَى like Allah's statement فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مِّن قَبْلِ أَن يتماس. The freeing of a slave before they touch one another i.e. here the word uh, the neck i.e. meaning a slave is not qualified with any qualifying description it's not mentioned here a believing slave i any being that falls under the quality of being a slave would fall under that it is mutlaq it points to an actuality i.e. that the slave ship and without there is no qualifying factor like being a believing slave فخرج بقولنا so our statement ما دل على حقيقة على الحقيقة it excludes for us العام لأنه يدل على العموم لا على مطلق الحقيقة فقط because the عام points to us to a generality not to the actuality of something uh, which is unrestricted, absolute. وخرج بقولنا بلا قيد المقيد. The المقيد is excluded for us. So that's here the definition, and then the Sheikh adds these points to um, clarify that. Then the Sheikh says تعريف المقيد. So notice that مطلق uh, مقيد mentioned together. And you would find عام and خاص are mentioned together. He says here uh, the ta'rif, the definition of al-muqayyid, al-lughatan, oh, al-muqayyid lughatan, ma ju'ila fihi qaydun, oh, uh, min ba'ir wa nahwi. It is that which, uh, it is that which, uh, okay, I've won the, the screen has my internet is cut on the other side. I will try to put the screen back up. Okay. So here the author Rahimahullah Ta'ala then goes on to mention Ta'rif al Muqayyid. He says Al Muqayyid Lughatan, Al Muqayyid Lughatan, and he mentions the linguistic meaning of it. Then he says Istilahan. In the, the technical term, and this is what we're focusing on at the moment, he says, ma uh, dalla ala al that which points to the actuality or the essence of something, biqaidin, with a qualifying factor, with a qualifying factor. Uh, here, okay, here. المقيد لغة ما جعل فيه قيد that which a uh, restraint uh, has been put on it that which a restraint has been put on it من بعير from a camel ونحوه or something like it i.e. there's something that's been put on it but the point being 
we want to focus on the istilahi meaning. He says, ما دل على الحقيقة بقيد That which points to the actuality of something with a restriction. كقوله تعالى, like Allah's statement, فتحرير رقبة مؤمنة Then the freeing of a slave, of a slave, which is believing. I, a believing slave. So not any slave now. It's not left unrestricted, anything that falls under the actuality of being a slave. No, it's anything that falls under the actuality of being a slave, but it has been restricted now with, or has been qualified with, that the slave should be believing. So there is a, uh, a uh, description that narrows it down for us, or that qualifies the, uh, the actuality of this being. فَخَرَجَ بِقَوْلِنَا قَيْد I where it says بِقَيْد It points to the actuality of something with a qualifying factor. Then this here, the qualifying factor, removes for us المطلق Because remember المطلق is that which points to the actuality of something without a, a qualifying factor. So now here, when we have in the definition of مقيد that you need a qualifier, or it has a qualifying factor, then it takes out المطلق for us. So these are the two definitions of مطلق and then of مقيد. The author, رحمه الله تعالى, then goes on to mention an important point, which is العمل بالمطلق, acting upon the مطلق. يجب العمل بالمطلق على إطلاقه. It is uh, obligatory to act upon the مطلق upon that which is left unqualified upon its absoluteness i.e. upon its unqualifiedness illa bidalil except when an evidence comes yadullu ala taqyidihi that points to its qualification i.e. that it has been qualified so if you find in the texts something has been left unqualified then you can you act upon that that it's unqualified Except whenever you have another text or a text, the text itself has a qualification, has a taqeed that is put there. So there's an evidence for it. لِأَنَّ الْعَمَلَ بِنُصُوصِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ Because acting upon or the action upon the kitab and the sunnah or the texts of the kitab and the sunnah wajibun is obligatory. عَلَى مَا تَقْتَضِيهِ دَلَالَتُهَا According, according to that which its uh, its understanding points to or entails. حَتَّى يَقُومُ دَلِيلٌ حَتَّى يَقُومَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى خِلَافِ ذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ الْعَمَلَ بِنُصُوصِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ Because acting the action upon the kitab, the text of the kitab and the sunnah, Wajib is obligatory. Ala ma taqtadihi dalalatuha. It is obligatory to act upon it in accordance to what is entailed by that which it points to. I.e., you find something in the Quran or the Sunnah and it points to something, then you have to act upon it. Hatta until yaquma dalilun and evidence is established ala khilafi dalik. To the contrary of that. So something is mutlaq, you have to act upon it until you find something that does taqeed of it, that qualifies it. Okay, who is the person to do that? Of course, that's going to be a sheikh. It's not everyone just reads an ayah and says, oh, this is uh, mutlaq because he doesn't know the other hadith or the other ayah. No, but this is principles that the sheikh is given for the person who is striving to become uh, a person of knowledge. Then he says, وَإِذَا وَرَدَ نَسٌ مُطْلَقَ And if there comes a nas, a text which is mutlaqa وَنَسٌ uh, وَنَسٌ مُقَيَّد And a text which is مُقَيَّد وَجَبَ تَقِيدُ الْمُطْلَقَ بِهِ Then it is obligatory to uh, qualify that which is left unqualified So to make تَقِيد to qualify المُطْلَق That which is مُطْلَق unqualified بِهِ uh, With that تَقِيد إن كان الحكم واحد if the ruling is one وإلا if not uh, عمل بكل واحد then the action will be upon each one على ما ورد عليه من إطلاقه وتقييده 
then if not then you act according to each one upon the way that he has come whether it is itlaq or it is uh, unqualified or it has been qualified so now what the author is going to do he's going to give us examples of that okay we'll take the examples in the next week in the next sitting inshallah ta'ala uh, so bithnillah hope that the definition of mutlaq al muqayyid is clear and the difference between mutlaq and am is also clear we stop there subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shallallahu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik